okay, that you can have confidence in Christ as he has manifested himself to you, okay, that, that during those cycles of growth, when it feels like God's taken a half step back from you, well, you can reflect upon uh, your experience with Christ and remain confident in these tools, right, that Christ has not uh, cut off these tools, all right, that you are continuing to labor in faith with the things that he has sanctified, you can remain confident in those tools. You can you can gain trust in Christ as you continue to touch him. Right? And so you continue laboring in faith with these tools, and the Lord will reward your choices of faith with an increase of, of grace. Okay? And this is what we see uh, taking place uh, with conformity and consistency. Now, we don't leave conformity behind with consistency. These things... Uh, all work together, don't they? So conformity and consistency continue to bring forth growth and fruit and new experience. Okay, you're experiencing the kingdom of God. Okay, now as you gain experience in the kingdom of God, it's it's easier to remain focused on Christ, isn't it? Why? Because you're you're continually coming into contact with that supply of His grace. It's the grace of God that sets your focus on Christ, right? And you remember that from the lesson. Okay, this is this is the uh, uh, this is this is one of the the, the uh, one of the uh, purposes of grace, what, what grace is doing, okay, uh, that or that operation of grace, right, is doing within the heart, setting our focus on Christ. Okay, so that as you overcome the cycle of your growth and are rewarded with an increase of grace, okay, uh, the, the Spirit of the Lord is assisting you in remaining focused on Christ. So it's through our conforming and our consistency that we don't struggle in the faith, okay, which is why, uh, you know, those that uh, become double-minded, uh, you know, struggle a great deal because because as they become double-minded, they begin to neglect the tools. Okay, as you begin to neglect the tools, then you're cutting yourself off from the grace of God. You're cutting yourself off from the grace of God, and then you begin to be overwhelmed with distractions. Okay, because it's very difficult to focus on Christ. Okay, when you're over overcome with the weeds that, that begin to grow. All right, just as uh, you know, if you have a, a flower garden. And the weeds begin to grow, and they grow up higher than the flower. The flower begins to get choked up, choked off. The flower is the only thing you wanted growing, but because uh, you allowed the weeds to grow and you allowed the, the weeds to thrive, you know, through neglect, uh, then all of a sudden the thing that you wanted to grow begins to begins to suffer, doesn't it? Okay, same thing happens. Uh, same thing happens with faith in the priesthood. And we talks about here in verse four in, in the sight of God. Okay, but let it be in the hidden man, okay, in which is not is not corruptible, okay, even the ornament of, of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God a great great price. Now he talks about not corruptible, he's talking about the work of Christ, the seed, the incorruptible seed. Remember he talked about that earlier. Okay, the uh, the soul fell into a state of corruption, okay, but the work of Christ is not corruptible. Okay, the seed is not corruptible. Okay, as, uh, and as we make application with it, so forth, so also do we bear forth eternal fruit. So in the sight of God, that has to do with that our labor of faith is in the temple, uh, which is in his presence and of great value to him, uh, as we are giving expression to Christ by our choices of faith. Okay, we are giving expression to Christ by our choices of faith, which is really neat. Okay, uh, That which is coming forth from the mouth reflects that which is within the heart. Okay, Christ in the heart, Christ in the lips. Okay, and this is where this is where we have our fellowship. Okay, and that's I, I'm sorry I, I I switched gears there. That's the third C, isn't it? Okay, charity. Okay, or communication. So so conformity, consistency, and charity. Now, uh, as as uh, new students, okay, as we began to uh, build the foundation of truth within our hearts with the whole stones. Okay, the elements of the gospel. Okay, the whole stones of the altars, the altar of Christ. That uh, as as we were doing that, okay, and we were gaining experience, okay, showing forth consistency. We're gaining experience with Christ as we touched Him; He was touching us. Okay, we're recording these things in our reflection book. We're reflecting upon these things for strength as we as we overcome the cycles of our growth. Okay, that uh, when it comes time to learn as concerning charity with the priesthood and and the offering of our spiritual sacrifices. Okay, we were able to draw from that well, weren't we? Okay, it, uh, we weren't simply uh, reciting knowledge. Okay, but we were able to draw from the well of experience. Okay, that experience that we had with the kingdom of God, that we uh, that we were we were instructed in how to function in the priesthood, and we've gained experience with functioning in the priesthood. So now we can speak as those who have experience. 
Right? Not just someone who read about building a garage, but someone who's built the garage, right? Okay, and so we're able to we're able to speak from that experience. Okay, and so also uh, does our understanding continue to grow? Okay, because because we're gaining that experience, right? Because uh, you know there's a, it's the same thing with with you know whatever trade you might be in. Okay, or or activities that you function in, whatever it might be that you you know you first read about it or were first instructed about it. Okay, so you gain knowledge concerning it, but then you had to make application of that knowledge, and then all of a sudden you found out that, you know, the way you thought you understood it might not might not have been quite right. But you you know you go back and you study and you and you, you continue to apply yourself with that knowledge, and all of a sudden you know you start to gain skills, right? And you gain understanding of it. The same thing takes place with faith. Okay, and uh, and it's it's after that gaining that experience, okay, that you're uh, that you're able to speak with understanding, okay, which has to do with that communication. You're able to then assist others in learning the same thing, aren't you? Okay, this is what takes place with charity that we build one another up with the knowledge of Christ. Okay, not without understanding, but with understanding. Okay, that as as God has instructed us, we're able to also instruct others uh, with the same knowledge, with you know concerning the same tools. Uh, directing faith into this, the same covenant. So God set distinction between vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor, okay? and he set the distinction in faith, didn't he? So therefore we examine ourselves not in the light of what we can see and touch and taste and smell it or hear, but in the light of faith according to the terms that God set for our redemption. Okay? So that we're measuring our growth uh, the same way that God does through fruit bearing. Okay? Uh, so that we are, we're not examining ourselves in the light of frailty, okay, in the light of our personal relationships, in the light of our uh, incomes, uh, or any of these sorts of things. We're examining ourselves in the light of faith, okay, uh, and through the through three C's, okay, conformity, consistency, and communication, okay. That's that's how we measure our growth, okay. And this is uh, this is truth sets our uh, you know truth. Uh, frames that knowledge that we understand this, okay, that, that faith is within these boundaries. Uh, and this is, this is our building is, with, is within this framework, okay, that we don't, we don't need to look without this framework or outside of these walls, okay, to examine ourselves, okay, that God has provided for that examination, okay, within Christ. And so also do we examine ourselves Okay, in that same light, okay, from that same perspective, which is the perspective of the throne, okay? You only gain the perspective of the throne by the Spirit, not apart from the Spirit. And the Spirit does not work apart from truth, and okay? the Spirit does not work apart from Christ. Uh, so let's go on here. So, uh, verse 5, so uh, when he talks about here, after this manner, or in other words, again, likewise, right? He's saying, uh, he's, he's referring back to that pattern of honor and affection. Okay, same thing. And he talks about holy women here um, who trusted in God. Okay, holy women, those of faith, okay, who were keeping covenant with God. Uh, they were using the things of, of the present covenant, okay, and they were using these things with faith in their hearts. And they were using these things to separate themselves from the system of the world to God. Okay, they were separating themselves from the philosophies of the world. To God, okay, not embracing idolatry, okay, or the philosophies, or following after their own heart, or listening to their hearts, okay, as you see people teaching today, okay. But what were they doing? They were using the tools of the covenant of the present covenant with faith in their hearts to separate themselves from the system of the world unto God. Okay, same thing we do today, okay. But these tools are now spiritual, okay, and they have a great deal more power. Uh, so they were not called holy because of how they wore their hair. They were not called holy because of uh, their jewelry choices. They were not called holy uh, because of their choices of clothing, but because of their choices of faith. Okay, this is holiness. So those that want to use these scriptures in order to to try to set, uh, you know, to 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 link holiness to to these these things as concerning hair and, and clothing and these sorts of things are, are misunderstanding Peter here. Okay. Uh, what he's talking about here has to do with the work of Christ, the adorning of the soul, okay, through fruit bearing and godliness, okay. Um, so, <clears throat> and this is what he's talking about: holy women, okay. They trusted in God, or in other words, uh, they showed forth consistency. They built on the prophecy of Christ, and this is a, this is a key. Okay? You want to highlight that they trusted in God, 
Okay, they built on prophecy of Christ. Okay, that which God had revealed concerning Christ, they had faith in their hearts and expectation of Christ. Okay, and when he's talking about here in old time, these are those in, in prior covenants, okay, and yet their hearts were, were uh, in expectation of what God had revealed concerning Christ, concerning faith, okay, that there would be a new and a better covenant, okay, one which would, would bring the cleansing of the conscience, okay, which is the covenant that we're presently in. Okay, that uh, that they didn't experience that work of regeneration within the soul. Okay, but we do now. They did have faith being drawn from their heart. Okay, they were working in 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 agreement with the Spirit of God. Okay, they were following the record that God set for faith. Right, grace, faith, uh, and uh, and righteousness. Okay, they were they were they were following that pattern. Okay, but they weren't experiencing the work of regeneration within the soul. Okay, uh, and so, but. Their focus remained on Christ. It's no different. It's no different than it was uh, then than it is now. It's concerning their focus. Okay, they were working with the grace of God. Uh, so, and this is this is why they were called holy women. Okay, they trusted in God. Now, trust <clears throat> comes through uh, contact. Okay, can only you can only develop trust through contact. In order to touch Him, we have to know how to touch Him. We have to know what God has sanctified for our contact with Him. Okay, so we can come into contact with God. You can't just poke around in the dark. Okay, uh, it'd be like someone uh, coming at you with a stick, right? And swinging at you like you're a, pin, a pinata. All right. Well, that's uh, you know, God doesn't. Uh, God hasn't sanctified that uh, that approach, has He? Okay. What has He sanctified? Well, He sanctified His holy knowledge. Okay. That is, you receive instruction. Okay. By His by His right hand. Okay. Through His apostles. Okay. That. Uh, <clears throat> that he would instruct you in the ways in the way of righteousness. Okay? Being instructed in the way of righteousness, okay, that you would with knowledge and understanding approach approach the living God with living tools. Okay, according to the present covenant. Okay, and this is what we do today. Uh, so the same thing with holy women today. They exercise their faith with, with the tools of the present covenant, don't they? Okay, they show forth consistency. They build on the prophecy of Christ. Same thing. So adorning themselves uh, he talks about here. They adorn themselves. Um, or in other words, this was the outcome of their choices of faith, not the initiation. Okay, the adorning is the outcome. Okay, the adorning uh, speaks of the reward. Okay, now deliver, just as uh, deliverance follows obedience, okay, so also does fruit bearing follow obedience. Okay, the uh, it follows overcoming, doesn't it? Okay, uh, the fruit of faith, okay, is 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 pertains to the reward okay, that we have to first overcome as faith is drawn from our heart and okay, that we labor in faith with that uh, with with the grace of god that which god has revealed to us we exercise our faith with that okay overcome the cycles of our growth and then the fruit of faith is birthed within the heart okay so our choices of faith are being directed by that knowledge that which god has revealed to us okay and that which that knowledge also okay sets our hope within christ Right? the work of Christ within the soul, this this work of fruit bearing. And so also do we then experience that birthing of fruit within the heart, okay, as we overcome, making application with this knowledge. It's really neat because the soul, uh, the soul and the spirit are coming into, into agreement. There's equity through Christ, okay, which there was no equity apart from Christ. And this is what uh, most people struggle with when they, they talk about, uh, you know, wrestling against sin. They're actually... Uh, you know, they're, they're not even on the battlefield of faith. They're actually wrestling against, uh, you know, what the heart wants and what the mind thinks, okay, that uh, that hypocrisy that exists, okay, because there's no equity, okay, because they're without Christ, okay, but within Christ there is equity because uh, because the heart, uh, the heart is, is set within expectation of the substance, okay, and the mind comes into agreement, okay, with this knowledge, okay, uh, you begin to labor in faith with these tools, and you experience Christ within these tools. The soul is being impacted with that substance. So now the soul being set within expectation is receiving fulfillment of that expectation, okay? And there's equity. This is the new man being formed within, because now all of a sudden, okay, there's no hypocrisy, is there?